My name is Daryl Kwal. Thanks for tuning in once again. We begin from the telecom sector where telecoms giant MTN says it would be carrying out some massive investments in improving network quality and data this year. MTN disclosed this to press the press in a crowd today after posting strong revenue numbers for last year. There's more in the following report. Other benefits when I talk about digital and the fact that digital revolution is not an aspiration any longer, is here with us. It is the only industry that is able to break down very complex supply chains. Can you imagine somebody in Hamilton seeking to buy treasury bill? You may most likely have to travel to work. You speak to a banker to buy the treasury bill and go back. Even before you earn the first Ghana series of return, the cost of transportation from Hamile to Wa will be about 10 Ghana series and back. In our case, you can just remain in Hamile. The meeting brought together top management of MTN, regulators and other stakeholders in the telecom industry. According to MTN, the strong performance was as a result of prudent management of its resources and growth of some new businesses. Some of you are all aware that there is an incoming society on um, international traffic. Um, so when you talk to the NC next time, that's $19 million now. Uh, which is about 89 million cities that was uh, paid to the, uh, to the NCA for incoming um, uh, traffic. So that's the six cents on international incoming traffic. And then, of course, the one percent that is due to GFEC uh, every year. They also talked about how they have been committed to tax payments, making them one of the biggest contributors to the state in terms of taxes. This slide actually gives you an uh, insight as to how much of taxes were collected from all sources in Ghana based on the Ministry of Finance uh, records. So now, again, this puts it in graphics, bubbles, showing how we progressed. And I think the message we're trying to pass is that as long as NTN is uh, doing well, then we would pay our fair share of taxes for the, uh, for the development of this uh, great country of ours. MTN recently announced it is planning to become the biggest financial institution in Africa, but Mr. Asante tells Joy Business they do not have any intention of becoming a bank in Ghana. We are not a bank because that is not our core business. We are a telecom business. Our core business is breaking down telecom services and making it available to the average consumer. That is our work. Along the line, because banking itself relies heavily on information, we saw the need to make banking service available on a data platform. And the model that we have implemented across MTN footprints is one of partnership. We do it with the banks. He also spoke about the fact that MTN is planning to introduce some new products on the mobile money platform, like money transfer and payment for some international services. We have that service with a couple of global partners, and um, that service will be extended very soon to other uh, major international remittance operators um, before, the, before the end of this year. Um, we have partners um, in Europe, we have partners in North America, and it's, it's a remittance service through mobile um, financial platform. And very soon, you watch this space, you'll be excited. You will not be walking to any other venue to be able to encash money that you receive from any of these global remittance players. Ebenezer Asante, who was recently promoted as vice president for MTN's Southern and Eastern Africa and Ghana, said that the brand is now poised for more exciting times, looking at the growth recorded over the last years. 
The Institute for Fiscal Studies is warning that the country's rising public debt is a threat to fiscal stability. According to the executive director of the IFS, Professor Newman Kusi, government must take immediate steps to control the debt ratio or Ghana might fall into another debt distress trap. He made the revelation at the roundtable discussion in Okra on the implications of public debt to the country's economy. The roundtable discussion was to bring financial experts to explore ways of dealing with the country's rise in public debt, which is having a negative effect on the nation's development. According to the Institute of Fiscal Studies, the country's public debt is over 70% of gross domestic product GDP. In a presentation, Professor Kusi Newman applauded efforts by the current government to reduce the debt. He thinks Ghana is not winning the war against debt stability. Rising public expenditures in the context of persistently weak revenue performance has undermined Ghana's fiscal and debt sustainability in recent years. As the country's fiscal risk remain high, credible fiscal consolidation was required to reverse the unfavorable debt dynamics and to reduce domestic refinancing risk. The fiscal management strategy of the new government that came into office in January 2017 aims at restoring fiscal discipline, reversing the fiscal deterioration it inherited, and putting the public debt on a downward and sustainable path. Unfortunately, it does not appear that the government is winning the debt stability war as total public debt continues to grow with serious implications for the economy. He disclosed that the public debt as of end of 2017 stood at 146.2 billion cities. According to him, government can overcome the challenge by coming up with innovative ways of mobilizing revenue domestically. The need for a carefully designed fiscal consolidation measure combined with a more ambitious medium-term adjustment to spare robust economic growth, enhance domestic revenue mobilization, and reduce the wetting debt and debt service indicators. The government was also advised to formulate and implement a prudent, effective, and sound debt management policy, balance the choice of financing sources and instruments, engage in responsible borrowing, by using borrowed funds to invest in projects that have a high private or social return and formulate an international debt workout mechanism to address fully the problems posed by unsustainable public debt and their implications for effective fiscal management. The rate of increase in interest payments also has to be looked at very critically by the government by ensuring that the rate of debt, accumulating, debt accumulation is reduced and borrowing is done at very low rates. The implication of the huge debt ratio on the economy continues to be a source of worry to economic analysts. All right, we are turning to the mining sector now. And the Ghana Mine Workers Union says it has called off its planned uh, national strike pending the outcome of government's intervention to deal with the stalemate with management of gold fields. The decision was taken after a meeting with the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources and the Employment Minister. Joining us on the phone line is General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union, Prince William Ankara. I believe by now you have communicated the outcome of that meeting yesterday with your members. What's been the reaction? Your line is very strange. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly well. Can you yeah, hear me? Basically, but I, I, I didn't get your question well. Could you repeat yourself, please? Uh, yes, I was saying that I believe that by now you have communicated the outcome of yesterday's meeting to your members. What has been their reaction? Yeah. yeah, basically, we, we, we realized that we're given the fact that after a long conversation, that ended up with a, a legal tussle, you know, and virtually go for just something that wasn't on. And for that, the members were happy. We had to really get members to understand that, look, 
it's important that we spread the intervention, you know. So for now, we'll come attention, and it's cool over there. We're we'll working as normal. We hold our small conversation. We're quite progressive, so that we're taking up from there. And as I understand, uh, the Ghana Mine Workers Union, the mine workers are committed to this uh, level of engagement with the other parties. Tell me about the meeting you're going to have tomorrow. Well, virtually the roadmap we had yesterday was just an opportunity to get the two parties together. Because as I said, we made a point that go for reason and time for the exercise in question. You know, doesn't fit into what if you let them go that route, you know, and it's told. We've not had any conversation from the same that about. So tomorrow meeting will be the first time in a couple of months that partners, the business, dealing with the collective market had not met. So um, it's really an effort to get, get it together to really look at all the issues that relate to the exercise. Even though we are not endorsing the rationale for the exercise, but given the dynamics, we owe the duty to our members to ensure that they are not short-chain in terms of whatever the contractual agreement to play, you know. So it will stick to really look at what has been done so far and so whether it complies with the separated uh, contract that we have between ourselves and go for it on behalf of our, our valued members. And obviously the intended strike is, is not going to take effect. Well, virtually, it's only it's, it's only professional right that if there's an intervention, we put on hold, you know. So it will depend on the extent of, of, the, of, of, of the conversation and how far we can dwell issue that it works well in, you know. What's in the virtual is not for any purpose for either party to call the bluff. It's a question of looking at the issue, making sure that those who really we praise the service are serving well and for that matter, they get whatever they do. So if, the, if it goes that direction, Obviously, it should mean that we just take it easy and make sure that we use the normal procedures in the contract to to to, to bring uh, everything that it will bring it to a closure. All right, we'll see how that uh, engagement goes. Thanks very much for your time, Prince William Ankwa. He is General Secretary of the Ghana Mine right. Workers Union. No, no, that's fine. I'm sure that one when we are done with it, the conclusive bit will reach you guys. Great. We'll have an update from you. Thanks. And right. So let's okay. move on to um, another story that has been brewing today. The Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company boss has discounted allegations leveled against it by the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC. Now, COPEC says boss has caused financial loss to the state in the sale of crude to the petroleum firm BB Energy. Now, reacting to the claims from COPEC on the indiscriminate sale of 1.8 million barrels of crude oil, Boss revealed the sale of a parcel of fuel at a discounted rate was to prevent possible financial risks if it had continued to store the amount. Now, Alfred Marte is head of fuel trade at Boss. He addressed a press conference in Accra this morning. The bulk oil storage and transportation company, Bost, is discounting claims of causing financial loss to the state following the sale of crude to a petroleum firm, BB Energy, reacting to claims by COPEC on the indiscriminate sale of 1.8 million barrels of crude to BB Energy. Bost says the sale of the fuel was to prevent possible financial risks should the company continue to store the crude. Alfred Marte is head of fuel trade at Bost. When the product came in, there was a credit period of 90 days, which is three months. So it means that March, April, May, the product should be settled off. The decision that was made to sell the product is somewhere September. So it means that we couldn't pay for the product up to September because the product was locked because Tor had technical issue. The original intention is to refine that product because doctors have technical issues, the product couldn't be refined. And we keep postponing until September that a decision has to be made because we cannot keep suppliers' money for that long. They have a reputational issue because if you go to the international market, nobody is willing to trade with you because you are not able to handle your payment terms. Also at the press encounter, energy expert Nasid Bakil explained the due diligence that Boss goes through during the sale of crude oil. The product was stored in 
uh, in tank farms. When we say in tank farms, we're talking about short tanks, tanks that are actually above ground. So when the tank is above ground, its uh, products inside the short tanks are managed differently. And if products stay in tank for more than a certain period, they tend to lose its, uh, its value. When we say lose its value, when you have fresh products coming off the ground within the first three months or four months and you refine, your yield is X. When you have products sitting in your tanks for one year and you refine, your yield is Y. According to Kope, Ghana lost an excess of 30 million CDs in the revenue from a transaction boss had with an unlicensed company. The losses, the chamber insists, were recorded at every stage of the value chain from the sale of some 1.8 million barrels of crude oil to fees for holding the rest of the crude. Despite the fierce rebuttal from management of BOSS, one thing remains clear. The controversy still wages on as management seeks legal action against COPEC regarding these controversies. For Joy Business, Charles Ayata reporting from the BOSS head office in Accra. Well, meanwhile, the National Fuel Storage Company has also been reacting to the company's state of indebtedness as well as the level of strategic fuel stock levels uh, it currently holds. The issue of BOS being strategic reserve country and why are they doing trading? <clears throat> the oil loses its quality if you keep it over time. So in order to refresh the oil, what do you do? You sell it. And two, I don't believe that you have to build a tank farm and say I'm selling product in there. Keep it three months. Employ 500 people, let them sit three months and they work. Go and sit down three months and they work. In the course of doing your business, you have to make sure that product is available and you will refresh it on a constant basis. So it is not an issue of strategic or non strategic. It's a pure business decision to keep refreshing the product so that it doesn't look its quality. Then your next question is what? I think. Yes. I don't think there is any company in Ghana here who doesn't owe. Every company owes, including talk, including your company. Everybody owes. The issue of how much, I think the issue of how much is an issue that both management have to deal with. It's not part of the issue that we are being accused of. It's an issue that when you come as a private person, you want to understand and maybe you have some investors, you want to, then we can expose the debt in its quantum. Now, turning to other news, the Ashanti region is to benefit from a huge electricity distribution facelift as the nation's power distributor marks 50 years of service. The Electricity Company of Ghana announced it is beefing up its distribution in Kumasi with 14,000 electric poles, over 200 transformers, and a number of cables to replace old ones. Meanwhile, Managing Director for ECG Engineer Samuel Boachia has been assuring staff there will be no layoffs in this impending takeover. Anaya Ojima was at the 50th anniversary Thanksgiving service in Kumasi and has filed this report. The ECG, after 50 years of service, has 6,500 direct employees and 100,000 on contract. The entire board and management of ECG converged at St. George's Church in Kumase to thank God. The company has recently delivered a number of transformers, electric poles, and cables meant to improve distribution of power in Kumase. The mayor of Kumase, Osei SCB Entry, was elated in what he described as a renewal of severed relations between ECG and the people of Kumase. We apologize for the poor quality of sound there. Let's move on now. Entrepreneurship is fast gaining popularity in Ghana, serving as a major source of employment for many young people. However, human resource consultant Ama Jampo is advocating the need for what is termed purposeful entrepreneurship among the youth. Karen Dodu has more in this report. 
The unemployment challenge is not only synonymous to Ghana, but across the entire globe, especially in developing countries. In recent times, many youth are embracing the need to explore their own ventures through entrepreneurship. In Ghana, many opportunities exist within the fashion, food and technology industries and are fertile grounds for employment. However, HR consultant Amajampo and CEO of Amdeco is advising young entrepreneurs to aim at solving societal problems with your skills. Say so start with a problem. I mean, we do a lot of you know workshops um, and training and advisory work for corporates. I'm a mentor on the, for example, the Cosmos Innovation Center uh, program. We always start with the problem first. Once you understand problems and see, look around you. You know, just look around your community, look around your local your locality. You'll find there are problems that you can think about how best to apply um, a solution to through technology, especially I'm an advocate for technology, I'm an advocate for women, you know, women talk to each other, we understand each other's problems. These are all opportunities that you can start with beyond, uh, you know, the funding which would come on later, but you, you can do some clever little things to just communicate and solve a problem and, uh, you know, start small and generate income before you then go on to maybe expand in future. She asked that there is a need for training skills before becoming an entrepreneur. You know, it's very difficult to get a good pipeline of talent, the attitudes, you know, punctuality, attitude and issues, even grooming, just, you know, being ready for the workplace. It's for yourself, you know, government is there, but you can't rely on government. Companies are there, you can rely on a job for experience, but you can't really rely on a, on a company for your own personal development. So we're really encouraging independent thought, independent development, and taking charge of all the information that is readily available for you to get to know uh, and understand the real problems. And problems also present uh, the very idea that uh, could be your the starting of your, your startup or idea or company in future. Amdako is a business support organization aiming to enroll in 1,000 unemployed graduates in internship programs with partner organizations throughout the country. The Food and Beverage Association is lamenting the delay in the process of affixing tax stamps on some imported products at the Tema port. Now, this follows what it describes as a frequent breakdown and inefficiency of the tax stamp affixing machines installed there. The machine, which was provided by government, is aimed at affixing stamps on selected products imported into the country. Executive Secretary of the Association, Samuel Agri, says the development a tema calls for urgent action. Charles Aite reports. The introduction of the tax stamp policy continues to be a source of controversy among food and beverage companies. Government has decided to shoulder part of the cost for manufacturers by providing affixing machines for some imported products. But so far, this facility is the only alternative for Ghana's beverage industry to affix stamps on their products. Undoubtedly, there are challenges associated. Two out of the four affixing machines at the facility are functional at the moment. Executive Secretary of the Food and Beverage Association, Samuel Agri, says the facility is currently being under pressure. Some of the uh, producers and importers uh, directed their um, imports and then the local production to the tax affixing uh, facility at Tema, the old supply commission warehouse, to be precise. Now, what is happening is that the um, product that has been sent there and the time consume, consuming, if you have a 40-footer container that has to be affixed with stamps, then the challenge is that the time that they will use to affix the stamps will take you almost a day. Sometimes you are not able to get the whole container uh, done. And therefore, they have to carry it on to the next day. And this is just a simple container. A yeah, simple container. Joint business visits to Tema to observe the process was met with opposition as no official was open to speak. Joint business was able to cut some shots of the facility as workers were affixing stamps on canned bottles from Coca Cola. We got in touch with some offloaders of Coca Cola products who expressed frustration over the relatively slow rate at which the process was going. Today is our first time of. This thing is happening to us. After finishing everything from the port inside, when coming out, they say we should bring it to here to that they have some stamp on it for us. Okay, fine, we're here. Our contracts are many. And since morning, only one truck in this side. And up to now, they've not even finished one truck for the labeling. How many cartons of drinks did you bring in there? Oh, the cartons of drinks, it's, it's a lot. 
It's a lot. Almost a thousand, thousand, thousand something. Something, thousand something. Everything. So you're and saying thousand, about thousand about cartons. Thousand and how many? Cartons. In one container. In one container. Yeah. How many have they been able to clear so far? And as of as of now, they've not even finished even the thousand since morning. I waste for my time here. I waste my time here. They've read, but now I'll, I'll come for the good, the good finish. Rather you delay me for here, for this label. Wow, this bus is so good. Outside the facility were several frustrated offloaders waiting for their product to be affixed with the tax stamps. They say that it's not just wasting their time as businessmen and women, but also putting a strain on the effectiveness of their duties as importers and manufacturing agencies. You're watching Business Live. We want to bring you our interview of the day. And uh, CEO of the Telecoms Chamber has reiterated the call for the stabilization levy on profits of telecom uh, companies to be scrapped. For now, the companies are required to pay 5% tax on their profits. But in an interview with Joy Business, Ken Ashigwe said the removal of the levy will free monies for them to invest in other important areas the telecommunication industry is going to spearhead the digitization of the country and it's good the government itself wants to do that and it's important that you liberate the, uh, the industry to be able to uh, generate that kind of activity within the economy bring up other partner with other organizations to be able to get other facets of uh, industry growing and all of that would happen when these businesses are empowered there is some level of contraction that could hit the industry, one would say that. Are you, are you worried about that? Because we had some who think that we don't even need more than three players in the industry. Well, you know the interesting thing, if you look at the current uh, contraction that has happened, it's two of our members that have come together, you know, and uh, in every industry, especially in the very liberalized industry, you know, these things would happen to be able to ensure that the markets are effective. So um, we pray that, you know, the macro environment is made favorable so that our members would be able to grow and then allow the competitive forces to be able to, uh, to allow the natural attractions to happen. And that's it for Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwal. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business.